the remarkably unpredictable Jake Arrieta gave the Cubs life in NLCS vs Dodgers. Consistency is boring. Sure, every GM on the planet would sell their soul to nab a hitting metronome like Joey Votto and drop him into the middle of his team's lineup. But sports are most fun when your range of outcomes sways from thrilling success to spectacular failure. The players who can do both, sometimes in the very same game, are the ones we can stop watching. The Cubs' nail-biting 3-2 win in Game 4 of the NLCS was noteworthy for a few reasons. First, it staved off elimination for Chicago. Second, it featured one of the most stupefyingly silly displays of umpiring you'll ever see, with Curtis Granderson's with strike three somehow getting overturned without the benefit of replay to a foul tip, making everyone at Wrigley wish we could just junk umpires entirely and go to total Kelvin ball rules. Third, it featured not one but two home runs from J.V. Baez, the Give Zero F's infield Dynamo who was 0 for 20 coming into this game, then won over the fans so convincingly, 41,000 plus chanted his name over and over. There's a 90 million word essay on Bias coming sometime soon on how damn fun Bias is. He's absolutely electrifying. But the biggest reason the Cubs are a game away from sending the series back to Los Angeles is that they have one of the highest variance pitchers in the league on their roster. And he was absolutely scintillating on Wednesday night. To understand the depths of Jake Arita's unpredictability, you can probably just start here. Apologies in advance to Orioles fans. As Tom Verducci detailed in his excellent book, The Cubs Way, Arita didn't lack talent in his O's days, not with a screaming fastball and a sharp breaking slider. His problem was that he had no idea where his pitches were going. Arita used and still uses a crossfire delivery, and everyone from pitching coaches to scouts believe rightfully so that throwing across your body leaves a pitcher vulnerable to injuries, and lots of bad outcomes. The Cubs believe they could harness Arita's talent, plus his hellacious work ethic and fitness habits, and make him the outlier pitcher who could succeed with that risky and unorthodox pitching motion. The gamble has paid off brilliantly. Arita finished in the top 10 inches Cy Young voting three times as a Cub, with his masterpiece the 22-6. 1.77 ERA 2015 season that nudged him just ahead of world beaters Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke to claim the hardware that year. But even at the top of his game, Arita has thrown down some clunkers. He ran out of gas in the 2015 postseason, posting a 6.75 ERA in the NLCS and World Series. Then in 2016 he posted the lowest hit rate in the league, only to throw up another stinker in the NLCS, then respond by dominating in his two World Series starts just when the Cubs needed him most. Then this season, we saw Arita go through an early season stretch where he allowed 22 runs and 33 hits in 20 innings and a 9 start run late in the year in which he never allowed more than 2 runs in a start. So when Arita opened his 2017 postseason by lasting just 4 innings with 5 walks against the Nationals in the NLDS, you didn't know what he and his funky delivery would produce the next time out. Another clunker? A 27 strikeout perfect game? Much closer to the latter than the former, as it turned out. Arita still struggled at times to find the plate, issuing another five free passes on the night. But he also punched out nine Dodgers, going six and two-thirds innings, allowing just one run on three hits, and firing every one of his 111 pitches with the back-of-mind knowledge that the relievers behind him consisted of Wade Davis, a pack of big league chew, and the remains of Mordecai Three-Finger Brown. He found success with his curveball in Game 4, throwing 24 after having thrown just 8 his last time out. RA's pitching correspondent Nick Pollock of PITCHERLIST.com offered more detail on Arita's success, and the Razor's edge he walks with his funky delivery. When Arita walked off the mound with two outs in the seventh inning, the Wrigley faithful gave him a thunderous standing ovation. The fans saluted Arita's stellar effort in a win-or-go-home game. They applauded Arita's four and a half years of excellence in Chicago, with Game 4 possibly his last time in a Cubs uniform, if the Dodgers win this series and Arita leaves via free agency this winter. A few of them might have even tipped their caps for this display of brilliance. Let's hope they also appreciated how Arita has pulled off a minor miracle. The delivery that would get most pitchers demoted to Abu Dhabi has somehow worked. And the pitcher who can serve up nine runs, or nine innings of no runs on any given night, came up one last huge unpredictable masterpiece.